Recording now. Hello and welcome to the first session covering replays between the Lizardmen and the Beastmen. We're starting off with a Lizardmen versus Dark Elf replay. Some terrible plays from Lycus we'll see here, but yeah. Apparently. Well, uh, good to see them at least. Did you know that Oxyodl doesn't just shoot one projectile, he shoots three. Three, is it? Yeah, he loads. That's a lot of projectiles. You know, like when he packs a thing, he 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 packs buckshot into that shit. He throws like fifty in, and just yeah. hopes and prays. He's got real yeah, good lung no. capacity. Uh, the the five hundred uh, armor piercing damage is actually split across like a hundred and forty independent missiles. Mm -hmm. So that that's it's pretty neat. He's actually okay at shooting at infantry blobs. Pretty neat. Yeah. Neato. Because he effectively has a hundred and fifty shots. Ooh. Ooh, that's a lot of shots. As this is the first game this replay is taking a little bit to load in, but we'll be there, there we are. Yep, it's always always the first one, let me just... Uh... Ooh, okay. Well, starting off, uh, we've got a new line of death here from the Dark Elf army. Yep, but technically, the, the Lizardmen don't really have a lot of um, uh, wave spells that can wipe out. No, so, so you technically can kind of risk. get away with that, but... Not even then, seems like a, anyways. If you look at the Dark Elf, it's just uh, Dread Spears and Bleak Swords in the front. Got an Eagle Hall Bolt Thrower, some Shades, uh, They're and not some, even, like, just a real organized. mix of uh, ranged guess... units. Cold One Dread oh, no, Knights yeah. along with Dark Riders in the back. Marathi flying up in the sky with a Soul Stealer. Of course, Soul Stealer is the best of it. He doesn't have a sword though, which did get buffed. Junior has Enchanting Beauty. Which um, is still pretty good either way. Of course, the armor-piercing missiles from the Dark Elves work pretty well against all the uh, heavily armored lizards. So Dark Shards and uh, Shades will do quite well. If we're looking at the Lizardmen armor, which is what we're going to be focused on, we have the new units. Which, you know, in the middle we have the new units, Comedian Stalkers. And then on the, the flanks here we've got Comedian Skinks, two of them. Three Comedian Stalkers. Uh, some more Skinks in the in the middle. Skink Cohort with Javelins, Cohort of Sotek, and Red Crested Skinks. And then Triple Cold One Spear Riders in the back. A Skink Priest of Beasts with is that a Manticore Summon and Penans Impenetrable Pelt, along with the Umbral Tide, which is a Salamander Hunting Pack. Lord being Oxyotl here with uh, his Snipe ability, of course, makes him pretty much impossible to see unless you're right next to him. And another Skink Cohort with Javelins over here. So, yeah, we'll get to see how this goes underway. Of course, the bolt thrower could also do quite good against the lizards if there was yeah, many dinos. But throwing single fires yeah. into skink cohort with javelins is not what you want well, to be doing. To be, yeah, uh, to be fair, you could just shoot at the salamanders. That'd be a good trade. Yeah, I can't see these yet because of the stalk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, the um, these yeah these were a good the target. Riders, yeah, the spear the riders would be a pretty good target. Yeah, that or shooting at. Uh, or just throwing uh, infantry rounds into the beast, something. The beast Oh yeah, Oxshot will there try to use his magic Ooh, missile wow, against Matthew. that's Marathi. not even three, that's a lot of... Yeah, that was his mi magic missile, I think, but that's mainly used for, like, a uh, close quarters shrapnel, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. He pulls so, out the Sawn-Off shotgun. Yeah, so his uh, magic missile, I forget, I think it's like the, uh, blow, uh, blow, blow, blow pipe or something. Yeah, the golden blow, blow pipe of uh, he that. Some heads, I kept them back, means that he can only shoot things, uh, quite close to do any damage, <laughs> right? And yeah, the they gauge forward, dark shark. Going forward, yeah. In the front lines, you can see the Comedian Skinks are off fire at well for some reason. So they so aren't they don't throw firing any of their bombs, yeah. Why like a set this we play in, I don't know. And also, also um, to specify, uh, grenades are very special in the fact that they don't actually get blocked by shields, so the silver mm -hmm. shields wouldn't block the stalker's bombs. No, not to mention you really want to use, seeing as they're more of a melee infantry, you want to use up like all the ammo as quickly as possible. So you yeah. can throw them into melee. Of course, the Manticore Summon going down would be quite good against Marathi. Marathi going after, o after Oxyotl, Oxyotl for some reason. Well, I don't think Oxyotl can win that fight. Mm. If he's like, beat the shit out of him. Be close, but really not where Marathi know. wants to be. I don't know, what's stat wise? And also to mention that the Umbrals and the Skink Cohort with Javelins, like these oh, Umbral Titans, they were, so much they were damage. obstructed by the ridge. Okay. A Soul Stealer. Gonna hit two units. How is the quality doing, by the way? I'm just really self-conscious of this, by the way. Now. It's fine. Yeah, fine. Again, that's if I zoom in on the fighting, you can tell exactly how good it is. Because you can see all the blood effects. Ooh, and then, of course, that's uh, Master's Proros going down there. And Marathi's getting completely destroyed. 
Yeah, he kept trying to chase Oxyol think... instead of, you know, helping his yeah, army. Yeah, Marathi has, what, 40 armor against the yeah. Oxyol and the Umbral Tide. It's not going to go well for him. Like, if he had just kept it back, kept it with the Shades, and kept protecting his other units, like, those Red Crystal Skinks over there was chasing Shades. Could have mm -hmm. flew over there and stopped that, but didn't. Didn't. So, yeah, a pretty, uh... But Salamanders hurt a lot. Yeah, those are hurting quite well. They do very well just because of their stalk, means they're a surprise unit, and because their missile damage is just so good. It's like, what, 100 and something per model? 136. It's like 100, yeah. And it, and and it has Andrew Large as well. And due to it being like over 100, even if they're like 100 armor, they're still going to take some damage. And it's explosive, so they don't even need to hit directly. Yeah. Again, like he's tried to use his magic missile at far range. That is not what you do with uh, Oxyol's magic missile. It is a close range thing, pretty much only. This is our time to make fun of Lycus for being bad. Yeah, and as you see, he fires three projectiles at a time. Yeah, three at a time. You see, uh, Marathi's Which, really uh, unhealthy. Uh, Marathi not dead yet. Pretty so. good at taking out things like monsters or cavalry. Yes. Yeah. Each missile does enough damage. And boop, 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 boop. Although there isn't, I don't think like, Oxyol has any penetration with his. Uh, uh, no, he does because does he? armor piercing. Yeah, look at the. Armor no, but I mean, damage. I mean, penetration isn't doesn't go through models. Oh, it doesn't go through models, no. but it'll one will hit the first one, they'll die, and then the next one yeah, will so if he, through the model. If, assuming there isn't any hitbox problems, he's probably going to hit kill like three uh, cavalry if models. If I remember max. correctly, if a unit dies, it loses its hitbox instantly. Mm. That's what I saw. But this like, is this is uh, CA level no, hitbox. No, no, no. Uh, given given the fact that I've tried to use warp stars so many times, I'm pretty sure that there isn't like a hitbox, a weird mm. hitbox thing when they die. It's only with the giant, I think, uh, or a, few, uh, a couple of other big, big monsters. Big old models. Yeah. Yeah, this battle is a real terrible uh, yeah, replay. When, when using when using stalkers, yeah, this is such a mess. Why did you send this like this? Because it was something. Place? Did you win it? Is that why? Yeah, he's winning it. He's happy about throwing well, around a new player. If, it, if anything, it does show Oxyol can kind of survive against a weaker, you know, caster lord. Against, yeah, against an anti large and caster lord. Yeah, I can see that. The MVP Salamanders, though. Yeah, he's doing okay with the Salamanders. And we learned that the Stalkers, uh, you gotta watch out for ridges because they can get obstructed for some reason. Mm hmm. He uh, has the uh, mobility force here when you're on a giant map like this, like having a also fast if I call would help a lot. Lycus used the beast caster to summon um, some two the yeah, manticores, macro summons always work quite well. I don't think you ever got the Mathra and Marathi though, which is like their ideal target. Yeah. Because like, one of those can shoot down Marathi really quickly. And there's not much uh, they, she can do about it, other than, well, scream and cry maybe. Yeah, drop a soul steal and spit it. I just hope for the best. Yeah, right now it's just running down these missiles at this point. Yep, Because the Umbral Tide is still alive, and unless you can get like a lot of volleys off on them, they're probably not going to be able to be killed. Because they are pretty decent in melee. I mean, 32-29 is not bad for a missile unit. Not to mention they're being buffed here with Penant's Impenetrable Pelt, and there goes Anios's. See the value on that umbral tide, though. Umbral tide, two thousand four hundred value, very well used. That is, a, yeah. But you can see good value. How if you can keep that alive, or keep just even the regular lizard ones alive, mm -hmm. they can they get a lot can work get done. Their value back mm. very easily. Let's see. Good caster for good, surprisingly good with the beast caster, despite not like having any damage spells on. Him. Yeah. Uh, because he was uh, flying in and fighting. Like, yeah, fighting a bit. Yeah. When he wasn't. Yeah. So he, he was useful. Oxyol did pretty good, but if, it, if you think he, he, for some, he, despite being a sniper, he's mainly for like shooting things close to him with his magic missile. It's strange how it works. Yeah. Well, I think think uh, it's like a panic button. Like someone tries to something run up close, on him kill like, it. Yeah. Pull the shotgun and do some pit, uh, clay pigeon shooting. All right. So that's the first we play. Oh, what's this one? It says it it's is, out of date. Uh, a hundred percent. Uh, it, it's it's fine. It'll yeah, be. no, no, that one's out of date, and also it's a previous beastman. We need new updated beastman. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't fucking. <laughs> have a lot do you of be? <laughs> I, I actually I that one. Here. 
no, no, that one actually is with the new beastman because also that there's one. a No, down one. That that one also has it. That one's Lizardman. Oh, we mean this one. It's a stream delay. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else delay. is there? But no, it, it was the one where um, it was using, like, uh, where you won. Uh, one one? Which one? Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that, that, that was yeah, all beast in there. Yeah. And, uh, well, actually, the funny thing is with the replays I found is that it applies all the uh, new rules to the old replays. So they usually go completely different ways. Uh, actually, it still goes the same way because yeah. Mm, it can change depending on how things go, and also the orders. No, I, 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 I watched it. So did we even win that one? Yes. <laughs> you can watch it. Wait, what is this replay? Who sent it? This doesn't even have this Men or Beastman in it. Oh, it does uh, have one Lizardman actually. Yeah. Okay, so the battle between Lizard. me and Logic is uh, entirely independent of the others. I see. So. Okay, so we can just look at that. Yeah. But let's see, number three, I believe, is the Lizardman. Yeah, I kind of want a Beastman one. I mean, do I have. Actually, no, I have some old ones here. Those ones you sent me were out of date. Yeah, those yeah You sent me this one twice, didn't you? Because <laughs> you sent me this yeah, one earlier. Yeah. Well, no, I sent it uh, earlier, but yeah. Well, again, it, it was a Beastman replay. And, anyways, uh, the game applies the new stats to the units, mm. so. Although we don't get to see any of the new units. Yeah, unfortunately. But we this, do this, get one looks, see, this one looks quite good. But also, the other part, well, it's yes, not just seeing the new units, it's about, you know, uh, how to use the new units. Yeah, but you can't show that if they're not there. Yeah, uh, this is a, a hard lesson in uh, what not to do. Hmm. <laughs> you, you probably see the, a couple of issues there. I see a lot. You wanna you wanted to see your new units so much. Yeah, it's awesome. Good. Good to see. I'm glad to see I'm glad I at least get one replay where I can tear into Ungo Chari I mean Tusco Chariots. Okay. Oh boy, this is a Vanguard deployment. Okay, okay, first of all, let's start this off. If we're looking at the Norskin build, it's very, very anti-large. Like, exclusively anti-large, yeah. pretty, pretty much. It's a Spearman front line. He is a Mammoth. Wolfric, of course, will do really well against all the Beastmen um, infantry, because they're all terrible. Uh, he has skin some wolves, familiar great weapons. Two units of javelins, two familiar Armored great skin weapons, wolves. three horsemen. Yep. And the funny thing is, I think Marauder Spearman with Rage can beat out a lot of the. Yeah, well, the Ungors don't have pretty good anything, so. Yeah, the Ungors are just really bad, and even against Goreherd, they can hold their own very easily because of Rage. Yeah, because of the, the physical resistance yeah. and also 37 melee so. defense. Yeah. But if we're looking at the uh, Beastman army, which is the highlight of the show over here, we've got some yeah. Tuscor chariots. These guys are good these days. Whether or not they they're will still be good. They're broken because of a glitch, and they're going to be... Yep, hopefully fixed. We have the new Gorgons over here. Big old single-large, um, anti-large creatures. Uh, yeah, look, you'll see in, uh, With one their of the reasons why well. the Gorgons usually aren't going to be used that much. And uh, it has something to do with both the armor and the fact that, uh... You don't want to face missiles. No. Of course, with the javelins and the spears, they'll do quite well against the gorgons because it only has um, 50 armor. Got a gobble here. Has a, obviously 100 armor, so they'll do a bit better. Uh, has Slaughter's Call. He also brought Torox, which I wonder if he also... Yeah, he also brought Slaughter's Call on Torox as well. However, these don't stack. So if they get close to yeah. each other, they're kind of wasting their effect. Which is yeah, why you really only Torox want to bring one of these. Been in the center with the... Yeah. Well, not that you want to bring one of them, but you only want to bring like one of the ability. You can have two if yeah. you want, but only this, bring the ability once. In this scenario, once. if uh, this person had actually like gotten rid of G Gorgon and brought like four units of archers, mm -hmm. the Marauder army would have a much harder time. Yeah, got another Gorgon over here. Um, Korox Man Rippers, which are anti-large halberd infantry. A caster on foot, which is quite strange for the beastmen these days, especially with Tuscor chariots. He has Saigal summon though within Vile Tide. Also, here's look. Here's the jagged dammer, da dagger, but he's on foot. So it's really hard to take full advantage of that when he's on foot. You should be on his chariot if you're ever taking that dagger with him. And just has some Ungor Spearman herd with shield in the front. Let's see yep. how this goes then. Uh, 
taking a minute for everything to move forward. Oh, he also has Torox as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. Yep. Which has the fire he damage, did. which can be good against them. Uh... Also, uh, you'll see in a second. Watch Ooh, the Gorgon on the right. The Gorgon on the right. Yeah, this is not a good place for the Gorgon to be. This is like the worst place for the Gorgon to be. Why he's trying to chase after this? That damage. Yeah, the problem is, is that the beastmen have nothing to chase down skirmish cav with. Uh, absolutely nothing. Yeah. They brought absolutely no hounds. No, no hounds or no centigors. No. Uh, yeah, I know. Anything. I read Chad. What is Chad? <laughs> And then he just kind of stands the Gorgon there, wondering what to do next. Just standing in between all four of these missile and, units. Oh my god, those those marauder javelins though. And then he the mammoth, a final towards... transportation here, going down. From oh, the yeah. metal caster from the Norskans, yeah. And that hits out uh, all of them as well. And the because of the air bug or something. Go into. The key thing with the Fumir Great Weapons too is that... Uh, they reduce armor even more. Yeah. So they're even so though they're although it's just getting into these now, but this Gorgon over here is also having it reduced and he's being pelted with missiles. Yeah, he dies so quickly. Oh, we're gonna have some sort of uh, Searing Doom coming down here in this expensive Beastman infantry, the poor Oxman Rippers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Gorgon coming back around. Gorgon I think, yeah, the Tusk Gorgon Chariot's got caught. I think this, this, yeah, this Gorgon over here has gone down now. Of course, Torox as well, also having his armor reduced, but it's still up to 100, so he shouldn't take too much damage. Yeah, he... But, still, volume of fire is important. He summoned a Psygor for some reason, who mm. I, th I think his plan was to beat up um, Wolfric. Yeah, Psygors aren't that good in melee. They tend to be a pretty good sort of uh, they, thing to throw they in. They really bad melee defense, but their melee attack is 44. Yeah, you don't really care so much about melee defense when it's a summon, though. It's like, yeah, exactly. As long as it has enough so health, it it's going to live. Well, if you wanted to summon something with terror on top of someone. Armored skin wolves losing there to the Gorgon, I think. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, a big anti large well, creature. Honestly, it's it's less losing and more just terror routed. Yeah, well, and they, they do have a lot of them, but I think they still have only really lost two models. And they all yeah, have regeneration, so, so they've got a lot of um, healing to do. Yeah. Torox just being pelted with missiles. So these these, more, these, these uh, horsemen are definitely going to have a lot of value by this. <laughs> Another Sony Doom going down there. Yep. But yeah, the, the problem here with the Beastman army is that his entire army is based around if the Gorgons are going to succeed or not. Because mm -hmm. that's 4,000 gold he's putting into these guys. Not much then, like, in the way of like 4, infantry into Torox and I think a Gorbal? Does he have another Gorbal? Uh, it's Torox and a Gorbal. And then he has the caster. Yeah, yeah, so that's like, yeah. That on its own is like 8,000 gold. That's yeah. all of his money. And if those don't do, aren't able to rip apart the army, it's not going to work. It is strange as well how um, both sides really just didn't focus on infantry at all. When like both sides have really strong non AP infantry. Like uh, Beastmen have Gores, uh, Norskas have Berserkers, but. And like both. Uh, no, um, Beastmen could have gone Spawn as well. No Spawn in this matchup either. Yeah, well, the thing for really that well. one is that it was sacrificing the strong infantry for Famir with great weapons. Yeah, Under I can see that. Large and armor piercing. Unfortunately, not all of the beast men anti large has got an armor piercing now, like Torox and the Gorgon and Gorbals and Minotaurs, so yeah. Famir with great weapons actually don't perform too well. Uh, against Minotaurs, they tend to. I think Skin will speak Minotaurs. Uh, no. Minotaurs Minot do wait. Regular, regular Minotaurs, I mean. Oh, regular wish, Minotaurs? Even yeah. then, it's, it's more of a problem of just, uh, they just do too much damage. The yeah, Minotaurs do like 100 damage a swing. They kill us, like, they kill a Skin Wolf on a couple of swings. It's just... Gorbal again suffering from the Missile Curse. But if you wanted something to keep on the Minotaurs, the Skin Wolves are great. Mm -hmm. Because they can run them down yeah, and if they win. Up. Yeah, there's army losses there. Also, did you know the big, like, kaboof, like, the big explosion that Torox has? All it actually does is it applies fire damage to Torox, apparently. It's weird. Right, he already has it there. Yeah, but he does apply the discouraged debuff. Yeah, the, oh, that, maybe, the, yeah, this that, I suppose. That's probably the only reason you'd use it to try and break something. But yeah, uh... Pretty good values. They all, all those Mortar Horsemen paid themselves. Yeah, killed, uh... The value from the caster. Oh yeah, the javelins as well on. also plays themselves pretty well. Oh yeah, javelins very good in this matchup if you keep them safe. Yeah. 
facing uh, Norska as Beastman, it just got to be. Didn't get you're, to you're better These off with just play. bringing. He would have been better off getting rid of the Gorgons and like uh, even the Gorbal, just bringing like two or three units of Minotaurs and some Ungor archers. Yeah, some Ungor archers would do well against all the unarmored like uh, Chaos stuff and yeah. Norska and stuff. Just like just anything, anything else would have been pretty, yeah. pretty good. Uh, on to the next one. Next one. Oh wait, there's one here that's terrible. Where is it? What? We must show the people because it's a Ted replay. Yes, this one. What? Oh. Yes, <laughs> this one. Look, it wasn't me that bullied Ted. It was Lycus. Uh... Oh wait, no, yeah, I remember this. This is... This is disgusting, isn't it? Well, honestly, I faced way too many, like, bad players who bring, like, three or four units of Star Chamber Guardian, and it just... It usually doesn't work. Wait, is this what I think it is? Maybe this is... No, I'm pretty sure this is the replay I think it is. It is our replay, Willow. But we will see what we're gonna do. It's the Lizardmen strategy versus Bretonia. Not quite, because the map's a bit off. Actually, maybe it's changed these days, but... But yeah, uh, a lot of Star Chamber Guardian. Real heavy in the infantry. Yeah, but uh, Petonia has a problem dealing with uh, heavy infantry these days. Yes, this is what I thought it was. This I is the box. Why. This is the Star yeah. Chamber Lizardmen box. Yeah. The ultimate counter to a couple of factions does very well against Petonia and it also does pretty well against uh, Vampire Counts. Yep. And maybe Beastmen as well, although that might have changed these days. Uh, it might have, but. Again, Star Chamber Guardian are still Star Chamber I think Bestigals might beat... Well, maybe not regular Bestigals. They'll beat no, Temple no, Guard, I think. I think Bestigals best beat best Temple Guard, but not Star Chamber Guardian. Uh, Bestigals can't even beat Chaos Warriors with great weapons. On the chat... Mm, yeah, but Temple Guard are, like, anti-large. They actually have very good melee stats. Being uh, a yeah, melee they, attack. What's their... What's their 31 melee attack. 31? Oh, yeah, no. They... Like, I, they, they'd be able to defend themselves and hold out. Yeah, it'd be a pretty close fight, but they will lose but testicles the, eventually. the idea is that you'd have good old massive movement. Yeah, to slap around. But anyway, we'll go through these. So, um, over here we've got Classic Ted, bringing the Classic Ted build. He's got Albrick. Front line of infantry, four spears, units of Christian Knights in the back. Archers, Spearmen Archers, uh, Beast Slayers, Men at Arms, Damsel of Life. I'm surprised he uh, didn't bring more, like, uh, like, Knights of the Realm. Or something. Well, they don't do very well against this man. Yeah. At all. I, really? Against the monsters, even? Even against monsters, yeah, they're just too heavily armored. Like, look at Master Monday, 130 armor. Yeah, true. Stegadon's 110. But anyway, but if you look at. Yeah, the they're fairly Lizardmen. cheaper, though, that, I guess. It's yeah. just a matter of overwhelming with more units. We can see some pterodons flying around. Always. Uh, when you go for a box like this, there's no reason not to bring pterodons because like, they're so disconnected from the rest of your army. And also, I think like one rock drop, if placed right, can just kill like any infantry unit on the Petonian side. Yeah. At least right. route it off. Uh, the, the front, he's got some skin coat of javelins, just there to sort of throw javelins and then die. Uh, three units of Temple Guard, one of which is the Star Chamber Boys, which of course are giving Mazda Monday some extra physical resistance. Speaking of which, Mazda Monday rising, riding around on his lack here, up on his chair. Uh -huh. He has yes. his AOE buff that provides plus 10 melee defense and melee de missile range to everything in range. Uh, Apotheosis, shield the old ones, everything here helps out with the box, the box formation. He also has a Stegadon here, which would be useful in sniping any trebuchets, but right now it's just going to be useful in sniping, like, cavalry. Speaking of which, also cavalry. Pock, Hopax, co uh, Cohort, the nice colour schemed oh, oh, Cold One Spear Riders. Yeah. They have the immunity psychology and they're a pretty decent anti-large cav with armor piercing, so they'll do quite well against Petonian Knights. And another skin Cohort in the back, just to fill in their numbers, I'm guessing he didn't have any, he had some money left over. Uh, but uh, what I was getting on is that this, uh, with the nice little run as well, you can actually use it to break up the weaker parts of the box. Mm -hmm. Because again, Chamber Guardian can't block all sides of the box. So you smash apart the ones that don't, and then you don't have to worry The about ideal them. box is completely surrounded with Temple Guard. That's why I thought this wasn't the box, because it only has three units of Temple Guard. Like most of the well, time, you bring like four or five. That's, that's, a, that's a bit too expensive. Yeah, no, but that's all you need. Like, Petonia really he well, cannot do anything to this. If, if you bring, yeah, it's like they can't break it unless they, you know, bring up the peasant archers. No, even then, they just like, they have what, 85 armor and bronze shield? Yeah, well, bronze and, shield. And also, they have base missile resistance because they can get it from Mesta Monday. I think it's for 10%. They do? 
they get an extra 10% damage from Mesdom and these little uh, Yeah, I still feel the Pheasant Archers would just uh, eventually chew through them very quickly. Hmm. Eventually. It, it'd just be a matter of waiting for them to do, die and you, you pretty much have to trade out like the terror. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like the... A um, lot of the units. Like the Peasant Infantry would die quicker than the Temple Guard would. And then you can just push through to the uh, archer line. Oh no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't tie anything up. You would just shoot them. Just stand there, but then they just move you, forward. You would. You would. Yeah. The, the only other thing is Ooh, to stay on with the ballista. Right, look at that. That was a wrath of Manana. Did that little damage to them. Yeah. Did literally and nothing. Apotheosis. And they're back up and they're full. Yeah. So yeah, he's going in with the pterodactyl Paradox, riders here. Uh, in, just a bit of disruption. The thing is, he's moved all this cav over here. <laughs> Uh, this is completely open to anything now. This, oh yeah, this hey Willow. Uh, there's no un new units in this uh, match. Yeah, but it's alright. There's no unit. In, in it's showing in a new. Match. It's showing a strategy in the playstyle. We should, we, should, we covered the convenience yeah, store for playstyle. Uh, now didn't we're covering you show a strategy the strategy in the playstyle in the previous replay that you ignored yes. and refused to watch. Which one? The beastman one. I don't even remember that replay. I do. Oh, why did he just drop rocks it. on his own? Cohort. Oh no, they're all right actually. No, not many stuff with casualties. We see one the, dead one there. Also, those yeah, the pole arms are fairly expensive for mini, uh, the men at arms units, but they are they're very good off at now, fighting. Half health and they've routed. Peasant infantry yeah. still wins the day. Yeah, at this point, at this point, Laker should really like redeploy just all those temple guards because like they only need to face this direction now. Also, all these uh, peasant bowmen are shooting at uh, effectively worthless units because yeah. they're javelins. This is the this thing. Is why, this is why I felt like if he had like a single unit, you know, like a uh, knight's errant or two, he could just charge him into the. Yeah, well, even then, because te the main mistake isn't that he doesn't have a knight's errant; it's that he's sending all of his cavalry around to one side, and oh, that just yeah, makes yeah. it like completely. You can't surround the box if you're only coming from one direction with all your important units. Yeah. Imagine when he can literally just go free also, reign over here. He's yeah. got nothing stopping him here. Even the yeah. beast layers won't do anything to him. They'll just get knocked over and destroyed. Stone, like, they'll blob much. up and watch Banishment will go down right here. I'm calling it. I haven't watched this replay, so I don't even know, but... I know he's dancing around the place now, so... Probably won't. Yeah, no. Uh, at this point, uh, yeah, this is the point where all the infantry just kind of falls apart. Yeah. And Ted's trying to micro that over there. But the problem is... They aren't even doing... Stars you, you, Guardian. You can just see how the Peasant Bowmen aren't even doing any damage to Mesdomund either. Yeah. He just has too much armor and missile resistance there. Well, even then, the thing is, they're still doing damage. The, the problem is that it's supposed to be over time and cutting it down. Mm, it's not enough there, I don't think. Like, you yeah. need literally like seven units of peasant archers to put even kill no, Mesdomund uh, on his own. No, four, four would have been more than sufficient. It's just the problem... The problem is he brought all of his cavalry away, meaning yeah. that he must have he could just run forward. If the cavalry was there, there's no reason to move forward anymore. What? The javelins don't outrange the peasant archers. He could eventually shoot most of his army to pieces. That's mm -hmm. the idea. That's the logic there. Why, that's why you have peasant archers. Like has also been quite risky here, disconnecting his lord from all of the anti-large. Like, he didn't need to keep his anti-large back here. He wasn't defending anything. He could move this up quite easily. And now Mazda Mundi is way out of range of his anti-large. Against the only things he has to worry about in the entire Bretonian army. Yep. And Ted goes for this good cohort first. Mesdomundi getting ample time to get away. Temple Guard taking their time to get over here. He's gonna all waddle his ass away. Puts down shields to the old ones, of course, giving that damage resistance to everything here. But also, it was uh, an interesting replay because you brought double giants as beastmen. Overcasted net. Everything in place, and uh, yeah, just so that Master Money can get away. That's all that matters. Oh, and there's the banishment. I was waiting for that. I think it was on recharges, is why I didn't put it down to there. Would have been better off just putting it here because it tends to move away from the caster, so the closer the better, usually. Also, that didn't do that much damage. Well, uh, because it dropped on a bunch of knights and they just didn't take any damage. Yeah. The cavalry can take that really. much damage from it. Yeah. This time it's a meat fest. I mean, Question Knight do have a 41 charge bonus. He does probably want to try and make use of that. Ideally. Is taking a decent damage. Yeah, that's mainly because Ted is given, of course, uh, that AoE anti large to all of his units that are fighting Mesdomundi. 
Like we could see which value the prison archers got right, by the end of this. If the cavalry was together, uh, actually, to be fair, if Ted had decided to bring trebuchets, that likes his. Uh, mm, yeah, that, that's why he has the stagger on there, is to snipe those, I think. I guess, unless it's behind a hill. Well, it has an arc of fire, unlike the uh, solar engines, so it does actually do okay around hills. I don't think there's a hill steep enough here for that to. Maybe mm, even behind this hill, he'd probably be okay. We can only tell. Albert going from as the you know, but again he is not armor piercing, so And uh old Master Mundi has hundred and thirty armor. Which is definitely nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. Makes pretty much most of the fights uh just grinding them down unless you've got a lord that has armor like high armor piercing damage or a unit that can do that. Because poor Alberic has no armor piercing. Nope. If he was well he has very low. Yeah. Now, granted, if he was on his uh, bird, he would have armor. Never see him on his bird from Ted doing. Never. So no, he's on his horse. Ted, Ted never puts him on his bird. Ted doesn't do much different. He's very predictable. With his Bretonian armies. But yeah. Also, if he was on his uh, bird, Teratons might have been scared away easier. I don't think he can catch Teratons. Uh, he can't, but he can still keep them away. If he's on a Pegasus, he definitely could. Can you put Albert on a Pegasus? I think so, yeah. It's the step down from the big bird. I've never seen him in his Pegasus. Because people usually put him on the big bird because it's armor piercing and has blood roar. Hmm. Pegasus is just really fast. Or even a paladin on a Pegasus. Yeah. Like, that would that would just screw over every pterodon because you could catch them, kill them, and they can't fight a paladin. No, they can't. they can't deal with that. Is that a bit of a uh, grindy fight now, to be honest? Yeah, you could just, just fast forward this. this. Do, do, do. Uh, there we go. Army losses. If we look at the peasant master value, only one of them paid for themselves. 600. 3. Yeah, and again, that's more just either one They were firing like, cohort for half the time and then mesmer did for the other Yeah, it, because thing is the peasants have enough range that they can shoot at like Masamundi without you know getting shot by the skink javelins yeah but the, the, the little men box is quite mobile you can usually just move it forward yeah you could and then you just move your archers back and then keep shooting or that doesn't sound cavalry to the break it. It, it's I don't know I feel like it could have been played better mm -hmm. but it's it just it is just a flat out very 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 bad matchup for Petunia yeah like that 2,000 value from that Temple God unit. Yeah. But I think that was stuck in into the uh, all the questing items. Yeah, it's so. got to, it was his ideal location. Yeah. Alright then, so we've had our TED replay for the day. Yes. I guess, uh, go back to the replay too then. We'll look at you that. really want to watch that one, don't you? Yeah. Fine. Well, because I picked it out too. We get to see a sort of odd uh, Beastman build. An interesting one, and also because you're facing an opponent that's, especially on a map that I'm facing Ted against. Yes, you are. It is another Ted replay. Yeah, actually, this did go terribly for Ted. I wonder if it will go the same way. Yeah, with all the new, uh, new things. <laughs> I just think because the AI bugs out sometimes between patches. Because uh, that's how it works. Is the replays are just yeah, replays of uh, just AI only... just facing off again. Yeah, the, uh, most of the time, well, most of the time if I uh, do put these in and they're old, I watch them first to see what Check the them. glitch is. And this one didn't glitch. All that usually happens, because at least, at, at the least, when uh, the replays are done and the new update comes, all the update does is it applies the new rules to the old game. Yeah, so sometimes it does completely bug out with like orders and stuff that they're given. Yeah, orders will get thrown all over the place, but I've made sure that it... Uh, shouldn't do that. Let's see. Yeah, just just ignore just ignore the other undead and the uh, coas men. Yeah. I do throw a pretty sick fireball though. All right, so we'll take a look at this. Uh, Beast yes. Army. To be fair, let me think. Against Coast? You we're doing Malagor. I know, let me just. Oh, yeah, was this. No, this is Morgan. Yeah, Morgan.
Warcraft. Against sorry. Beastmen, against uh, Vampire Coast, this probably could be a pretty similar build to what you'd bring even with the update. Yeah. Although I might actually have probably not brought a Spearman Herder, would have brought more Gores. Yeah. Regular on Gores. Yeah, regular Gores would just. Also, no, I, no, actually, I would not go double giant against Coast. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> against, against Vampire. Well, actually. It was kind of surprisingly useful because the giants actually have a lot of health. Yeah, just Ted didn't have a lot of gun. Yeah. Yeah. He. Well, no, he has a couple two of deck gunners. gunners. Yeah, two deck gunners, it? which should have been a threat, but. I think the giants. Giant, the thing is, there's two giants. They just have too much health for two deck gunners to do anything. Yeah. But anyway, uh, if we look at the we'll just look at the beastman army. It's a uh, ungor yeah, yeah. spearman herd in the front. It's just like the cheapest front line you can get. Only three hundred and fifty for these guys. So always a nice little cheap front line you can get. We've got five units of those. Two Chaos Spawn in the back. Morga, who can himself summon two more Chaos Spawn. Uh, yep. Two Ungar Raiders with... Oh, well, they're called Ungar Raiders. I never noticed that. I thought they were just called yeah, Ungar Archers. they're called Ungar Raiders. No, no, it's that. Because they raid. They raid. They re-raid it. Two Senegors throwing axes in the back. Um, another Chaos Spawn. And two Giants, along with a Brave Shaman of Shadows with Pendulum and uh, the Razor. Now, the thing is, is... This used to be the, the only source of giving something magic damage in the only Beastman roster, but now with the um, the fact that Death, the Deathcaster can give magical damage, that does help out in this matchup a bit. Because yeah. the problem uh, is his Beastmen don't have really anything to do with their uh, physical resistances. Yeah, yeah I, I found it interesting because it's the idea of, like, you, two Giants are so much overload that either one, they ignore all of your, like, smaller units to shoot the big guys, and then they can only kill one, and the other ones don't reach as your front line anyways. Mm -hmm. And also the other thing with Beastmen Giants that should be noted is that they have Woodsmen, so they actually don't get debuffed for fighting in forest. No, yeah, they're the only different giant. All the other giants are exactly the same, except they're, for they're Beastmen Giants. They're, yeah, they're significantly better than other giants, because yeah. they legit don't get the uh, debuff for fighting in woods. You can actually have them run into woods and fight, and be relatively protected from missiles. Now, this front line is like a really bad news for Beastmen most of the time. It's ethereal, got yeah. a giantly armoured single entity. Not good for Beastmen. Not good at all very rough these days obviously it's improved but pre-patch this was pretty bad oh, yeah, at sea. yeah two cannonades too yep Ted still yeah that still happened yep and a pendulum like pendulum go down considering those are ethereal units you would have thought they'd like to wipe it out completely it didn't quite uh, I think it's because it didn't hit all the models yeah it's because of how spread out the unit is generally or the, the models just have a lot of health these deck gunners only have like 15 armor, so they die quite quickly to archer fire. Fortunately, here you see the var guys and the crypt, uh, the you know the ghosty boys come barreling in from the side. Yeah, they run right into those chaos spawn. But you know they're chaos spawn. They're kind of yeah, like the most chaffy on, monsters infantry, even though they're really good damage dealers. Beastmen, uh, chaos spawn are poisonous, so they actually cause poison. Uh, they reduce the damage that they can do to the. Chaos spawn. It, it kind of works out in their favor. Yeah. Uh, Giants versus Sloth Shooter. I was kind of uh Either one, I think it might be the thing that's glitched, or two, you, for some reason you decide to click off of Seostra with your Giants and to go attack something else. Right, they should have been focusing the whole time. Yeah. Oh, just turned a unit into Chaos Spawn there. I think I turned, don't know how you can turn yeah. Ghosts into Chaos Spawn, but there they are. And I send them right into the back line. Yep. The ability to just they're... summon up them works quite well. Especially yeah, against like yeah, missile heavy factions. Chaos Spawn are still fighting. Yeah. Just pushing through. The archers are still shooting, shooting down the Vargeist, shooting down everything else. Like, the Ungor Raiders are pretty valuable. Pretty they can, again run down here though. They're like they're like peasant bowmen. They don't But they, faster. Yeah, and, yeah, they're peasant bowmen, but And faster. have stalk. They're, they'll die to anything that shoots them or decides to fight them, but hey. Good vol volume of fire. Yeah, good volume of fire. Yeah, I think it's uh, around here. But yeah, the two giants off their own just completely batter Seostra. There's nothing. Oh, yeah, here they do. go. They should probably be staying yeah. to kill Seostra at this point, I think. I think the Chaos Spawn kill her, anyways. Really? Hmm. Uh, I. Uh, I, think I also seem to remember this spawn unit definitely should have moved by now. Yes, it should have uh, moved. But we still win in the end. That's because all nice. the giants walk forward and uh, smash smash them because they... Again, they have giants, so much health. Yeah, they have so much health and they do surprisingly well even against like spears where they have bonuses because they do a bunch of like AoE damage really well. 
and at this point it's just slowly grinding them away. But given the fact that the Beastman army held up pretty well, even though it got blindsided by a bunch of extra units from the vampire counts, <laughs> it's funny watching. It's, it, it's funny watching to see how the AI is trying to correct it so that it's. Oh, and then they just conceded. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could notice like mm, I remember this happening, and then all of a sudden the giant comes over because it's, it's realized it's where it shouldn't be. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm meant to be over here. Stay enter stage left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, so bad. Yeah, but giant, giant. So a giant problem with giants. Yeah. Yeah, I know that uh, one of the things is like, uh, Gorgons are just like, more expensive giants mm -hmm. when you could just Ooh, bring a this giant one sounds, This one sounded good. Lizardmen versus Tadawi. Yes, this is the... Uh, I suck, but I'm down for some games if you want. Uh... Well, just, we, just we covering some replays playing. right now. Yeah, we're we're watching the. Although, how many do we have left that are like playable? We have uh, four more. Actually, I'll check if there's any more. Replays. Yeah, and uh, then just two others. When did the DLC come out? Uh, the 14th or 21st? 14th, probably. Oh, well, looks like we have a lot of Lizardmen replays, but I'll just have to focus on Beastmen next session. Yes. Maybe we should. Oh, well, no, I, there, are, there are Beastmen replays. But There's like yeah. three. I know. It's, no one sent in any uh, Beastman ones. Fortunately, I was going to come on earlier today, but got caught up. Yeah. Caught up in that Formula One racing. No. How was that, anyways? Hot. Very Hot. warm. Right. Incredibly warm. 30 degrees, to be precise. Celsius, that is. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, recently there was like a heat wave here. Uh, heat wave everywhere, where... I think. Where it was like up to 45, or 40. Is that Celsius? <laughs> Celsius, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I was walking by and the forest just caught fire. <laughs> the forest caught fire, yeah. My friend spontaneously combusted. <laughs> well, that wasn't that bad. Kind of. 45 know. degrees. Well, right now it's like 21. Pretty sure steel boils at something like 60. <laughs> steel doesn't boil. <laughs> no, I just steel. remembered seeing a, <laughs> seeing a meme about that. I don't know about that. Hold on a second. <laughs> there was like a... There was like a, so, so, a so, something, something happened, like a weather a forecast station, and the numbers all bugged out, so it was showing like 2,200 degrees. And the weather yeah. guy was just like, I'm pretty sure steel boils <laughs> at about this temperature. <laughs> so everything east yeah. of this is just gone. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it seems that it's been reunited with the sun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is global warming. It's now 2,200 yeah, degrees here. Uh, so we got. We here, can have a look here. Nice. Let's look at this uh, dwarf army first. We've got Ungrim yeah. and the Master Engineer. We can actually take a look at some of the changes here. So we've got the Master Engineer who comes with the Flash Bomb now, which has changed. Yes. It's a really weird spell. It's like a really short area of effect hex that you can put on an area. And it's a pretty good slow, yeah. and it also has melee defense drop. Fire Ring which, Authority. Uh, Interesting to have in this matchup. I think it's not very good against armor. Isn't it? Isn't it a? Uh, yeah. Wait. Okay. Just the flash there bomb. There we go. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be, but it's great for skinks. That mm -hmm. which would be the main threat but to I don't... a dwarf player. Yeah. <laughs> skinks. Ooh. Uh. Well. Rest. Red crested skinks. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because of armor piercing. Yeah. I don't think he has any in this matchup actually. The big Maybe he has. You've yeed your last haw, my son. You've but... yeed. In the front line yeah. we have Dwarf Warriors with great weapons, of course worried about that uh, Soros stacking. He hasn't, yeah, although little does know, he has to just deal with these guys for now. One, a couple of units of regular Dwarf Warriors. In the back we have two units of Thunderers, Ulthwaz Rangers, which are very, 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 very armor-piercing damage dealers. 
with along with oh, their ability that reduces missile blade strength. On stream. Yep. Let me kill something. That should be better, hopefully. And the back here, yeah, got a cannon. Nothing up. guarding the cannon. That's very bold. Absolutely nothing there to defend. Literally, this entire area is completely exposed to anything large. If a unit of cavalry went around it, it would die. If a pterodons were here, there wasn't really yeah, much they could still do. Lagging. Still lagging, is it? Yeah. Oh well, I can't really. I think it's here. Fix. Yeah, I do enjoy the slideshow, but uh. Just have to wait for it to catch up, hopefully. Uh, in the sky here, we have yeah. two gyrocopters with brimstone guns, which are, of course, are anti large armor piercing, which, so they which can Which I think us. is the reason why he has the cannons off on its own, because the gyrocopters can respond. Yeah, I suppose so, but even then, like, just a. If you had a unit of uh, feral cold ones or something sneaking around the side, not really yeah, much. Yeah, there's not much can do here. Can do about it. He does have this cannon, though. This, oh, these are organ guns here, guarded by some dragon back slayers, which, of course, have yeah. their steam, uh, their debuff. If we're looking at the Lizman army, he's got a Pistilzon, two two Pistilzons with Arcs of Sotek. Trying out that new Arc of Sotek uh, ability, where it's like yeah, a Vortex. It's weird, it's almost a Mortis Engine, but it's not quite a Mortis Engine. Yeah, it, it's it does, almost there, it does but damage. just not, not but, allowed to eat at the same table. Yeah. Uh, some Red Crested Skinks, of course, are very good with their AP and high melee attack. Maybe, Skin maybe cohorts, I'll try re refreshing. Raises on hunting packs. Uh, Gore Rock. Very strong uh, in this matchup because he has really high just survivability, and he has the armor piercing needed to deal with some of the dwarf lords. And he's cheap, so you're able to invest in the rest of your army quite well. He has some razors on hunting packs, two units of those, with their AP missiles. They might actually come in handy here. And triple croxagors. Hidden units are being revealed. Tri uh, cri croxagors, I think, actually might work pretty well against these missile-heavy factions that you expect to bring just like lots of infantry. Because while their stats are really bad against large, they have the extra. Um, 20 bonus versus infantry here, which really yeah. helps out in the matchup. Like if they're fighting anything except from infantry, they tend to lose. They need yeah. to be fighting the infantry uh, to, in order to make full well, value. They can fight other things, but they need to be supported with like harmonic convergence or some. Yeah, because they only yeah. have the 26 melee attack to do that. Yeah. He also has a skink priest of heavens with uh, thunderbolt. Interesting choice and uh, curse of the midnight wind. Thunderbolt's a pretty good spell. But yeah, what, you're still what like... law would you bring against dwarves? Maybe be. Uh, I mean, Manticore summons work quite good against their dwarves, I think, they, so maybe at least. They are, but the thing is, most of them have uh, leadership too high to terror route easily. Yeah, yeah, the just light, the Manticore you can throw into, Lightning Bolt like... is reliable, it does a lot of damage to armored units, like, it, it, like, if you aim center mass on a Black Orc, you, you take out a third of its health. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's very solid damage, and, uh, you can Although also... here, there isn't a lot of, uh, high expensive infantry for Uranus's Thunderbolt to do much against. Well, I guess lo like long beards are great weapons are like. There are no long beards great weapons here. It's only oh, dwarf warriors. Just dwarf warriors. Mm. Wow. Then you the can issue. just use harmonic convergence on like something. It doesn't have harmonic convergence. He only yeah. has uh, curse of the midnight wind and the uh, thunderbolt. That's disappointing. Well, I guess you got curse of midnight wind. Yeah, which is a debuff, which is always nice. But here we will see these crocodiles should tear through these. Oh, actually, they've got Ulthwas rangers and thunderers there, which could be quite an issue. Yeah. But, uh, the Croc scores with the help of the Skinks should be able to break through. Yeah, quite easily, I'd say. Just Dwarf Warriors after all, not even Longbeards. Yeah, uh, Longbeards probably would have a pretty good chance of uh, holding holding them back, but at that point, they could hit with, like, a Lightning Bolt or something. Or something. Or just hit with a Midnight Curse. Gyrocroft is getting them. hit by the Razorons. The front line of the dwarves is just way too weak here. It's going to get overwhelmed yeah. way too quickly for the dwarves to really make full and use of their firepower. The, the interesting thing with the Razodons is that uh, biz, uh, parado it's like a bizarre paradox where the Razodons are such a like a low, like shitty low cost unit that you can have them just shooting the gyrocopters and the dwarves probably won't do anything about them because mm -hmm. it's a waste of ammunition and it's a waste of time to try and shoot them. But they're still going to get shot at, eventually. Yeah. Like, they'll mostly be left alone, unless the dwarf player wants to lose. It's weird. But yeah, See. if you're against dwarves and you're afraid of gyrocopters, just bring one or two and just shoot at them, because the dwarves are never going to move. No, never. So, so not exactly not... a good dwarf rush build, isn't it? it, it yeah, it, it's a, a funny situation of... Razonon's actually being kind of useful, because the dwarves will never move forward or tie them up with anything. Because <laughs> the main weakness of Razodon is that they can easily get tied up, get especially how close they have to be. Yeah. I think 
at this point, he starts like running things over. I think Gorok almost gets killed too by Grumbrindle. Oh yeah, um, you, I know he's fighting Ungrim actually. Grumbrindle not used as much anymore now that he doesn't have the flash bomb. So yeah, Gorok Priest sturdy, but he's fighting a, a Master Engineer and Ungrim Iron Fist here, so not looking yeah, great Umgrim, for him. Umgrim does a, he does good smack. He has high damage output, certainly. The art of Sotek actually, yeah, pretty good. Pulling some, yeah, I think it might be pretty good these days, actually, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be working well against because the thing is, it's not magic damage. It just seems to be just direct damage yeah. in general. So it just saps life off of the units, which is really good against these heavily armored dwarves. So you would toss it in if you can get it past the initial gun line. You toss it in. Activate the thing, watch the front line disappear, and then you can just push on through. Yeah, it does work out pretty well. Yeah. Of course, as well, the Elizabeth all having very heavy anti infantry stuff works very well against the dwarves. Also, the uh, stream fixed itself. Yeah, like good then. Okay, cool. It's just been some issue. Yeah, just. This unit of Jarikov does still have all three left, although that probably doesn't the last very long. Look at that, their health, their health is so low and they still have all three models left. That happens a lot with Gyrocopters. Yeah. yeah uh, but again, they're all taking damage and they, they have the worst scenario. If you want to stop getting shot at, you have to attack a unit that's actually worth less than you. Mm -hmm. And can probably win the combat. <laughs> Gorok still holding out against Elgrim here. Yeah, Been Gorok, for quite a while. Effectively, effectively the Lizardman's version of Sigvald. Yeah, pretty much. Except he has AP and no regeneration, that was the trade off. Yeah, no regeneration, but. Uh, you can actually get healing there to be fair with there, isn't it? So. Yeah, you can get like revivification crystals or apotheosis or earth blood. That's uh, army losses there? Yep. Let's see, just send it on Shock concedes? Yeah. That uh, battle, battle wasn't bad. I think the values are still very. He has quite a large army, so the values ended up being quite spread out. Yeah. Uh, what about the resistance? <laughs> 200 and. Yeah. But it did, everything did okay in general. I think just um, most of the fair, but like, if you look at where all Shog's money is, it's like in uh, the cannons, the brimstone gun, the um, organ guns, even, and yeah, uh, the and Lord and Hero. Which, uh, everything doesn't valuable really die. is in those things, which is what the Croc scores weren't fighting, yeah. but they did their job. In yeah, if they were, if they definitely were, if they were long bids there, Croc scores would have got a lot more value. Yeah. Okay, uh, on to the next replay. Because we did Lizardman four, so five would be next. Five, yes, is it? That, yeah. Which one is this? Oh, this one, eh? Okay, we'll take this Roll. one. Yeah. That, that's also awesome. Lizardman versus Skaven, is it? Uh, I'm you waiting for it to catch up. Said it was you fighting Lizard Men, wasn't it? Yeah. And you're it's Skaven. A... What is... Yeah. You get to look at my Skaven army. Mm. <laughs> I already uh, sense that you have uh, opinions mm. about it. First of all, you haven't brought any counter guard. If yeah, you're gonna bring Stormborn with Hardwick, bring. Not a fucking bring... square. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Bring, you have three hero lord characters and you didn't bring the counter guard. Yeah, because Queek best. But give him 15% right. physical resistance. But Queek best. No, um, I could also get that with the chieftain, but I didn't feel like bringing the counter oh, guard. Oh, yeah. Because right? the counter guard was serving a different purpose. Uh, I mean, the Stormborn was serving a different purpose than just protecting Queek. Because I got, I got a Plague Priest. I can summon Clan Rats if I need to protect my... I mean, even then, Counts God, the fact they're unbreakable means they're just better at defending anything. Yeah, but also they're a gigantic target. Mm, they're only like 200 gold more than regular Storm Vermin, I think, aren't they? No, they're 350. Is it 1,350? Yeah. Uh, I think around regular Storm Vermin are 1,050. They're 1,000. They're just a flat thousand. Is so flat I'd, thousand? Be, I'd have to lose a Clan Rat for that. A sacrifice willing to make. Uh, that's a sacrifice I'm not willing to make. I would be. Uh, I'm not. I'm not letting up Bill and his uh, band of. Uh, Let's see boys. how many sources of terror the Lizardmen have, considering uh, Stormvermin are not even immune to psychology. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, look at these guys bringing Wurzag and a three v three. Who did that? Who was who yeah, was the That was in cap. Oh, that's disgusting. 
That's awful. How would he do such a thing? He's going to give a bit. If he has the Bonewood Staff as well. When he already has the miscast likely. chance for miswipe for map wide that. Yeah, and he has the Bonewood Staff. What a better, eh? Unbelievable, yeah, that in cap. And uh, Kukin was, I think, Azag, so. He brought this one. Yeah. He's noob lining. The cruelty, you know. He's noob lining. Why is there so many Savage Orcs? Oh, uh, because Kukin is just doing what. Doing, you do doing things. Anyway, we're looking at this fight over here. Yeah, we're looking at. <laughs> we're looking at Not the rest. Versus... Here we have the Lisbon so, Army. Um, I guess I should I'll go, go through over... the Lisbon Army first. You can go, go through the Skaven Army. Okay. Okay. So we've got Soros in the front line, three units of them. Skink Cohort, uh, two units of Soros Spears in the flanks, Cold One Spear Riders in the back. A Skink Priest of Beast, again, see that guy a lot. He's got. Oh, no Metacross on the name. He's got Curse of Anathrema, yeah. uh, Penan's Impen Impenetrable Pelt. Try saying that three times fast. And yeah. Flock of Doom. Also has a unit of skink skirmishers there, two of them, with Oxyotl in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Looking at your uh, army now. Yes. Uh, Just believe well, it. I believe to bring it. Two, uh, I've decided to bring two units, well, three units of clan rats. Two of them have shields, one of them does not, because I was really uh, making a lean army here. Three really units tight on the man. Uh, I'm slingers. seeing you didn't skimp out on Creek there. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, no, I didn't skimp out on Queek. You can't squim skimp out on Squimp, Queek. Squimp out on Queek. Yeah. That's but, just and, play and Look at this, you even stacked them in the storm them, and this could have been the council guard. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't, don't worry, Queek, Queek, uh, he gets busy, don't worry. Um, yeah, but you could have dropped Wither and probably afforded it. Yeah, but here's. No, Wither isn't 300 fucking coins. Well, what? So you drop Wither, you drop like a. Uh, maybe Queek's item, and there you go, you got enough. What? Why are you Switch. so obsessed with trying to get because the counter guard? Because counter guard, good. Lycus would agree with me. Right, Lycus, he's not here, he's talking to his in-laws. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, I, was, I was working around the fact that <clears throat> I'm just needing the three units of uh, Storm Vermin and wasn't willing to give up a whole bunch of uh, extra bits because uh, World Edge armor is pretty good and also 75% more armor piercing. It's pretty good too. With three units of uh, Wolf Rats, which are all armor piercing because it's the basic variant uh with the uh, beasts of rage <coughs> with a brood brood horror riding uh pack master yeah of course he gives the aoe uh, regeneration to all the monster um molder monsters which oh no he doesn't even have that yeah, he does he has that and he also has his uh, shot color which he can give to like uh wolf rats which works quite well because it gives him immunity to psychology does it also give him extra leadership uh yes it? It does yeah so yeah that makes uh, wolf rats op whenever it's activated scary. Other uh, yeah, so that's uh, that. I think I'm. Yeah, I'm trying to get them in a formation so they get affected. Everyone gets affected with regeneration when they run in. Yeah, that's what you want to do. Is you want to like blob up with them there. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't bring the council guard. Ooh. Tuh. Yeah, tisk tisk. Right? Tisk tisk. Yeah, Oxyodel there. Uh, in this battle, it was really weird because Oxyodel had a problem with actually like shooting sometimes. Mm, this spin sometimes... seems to be quite an awkward ridge here, and seems he's technically a straight arc shooter. Yeah, he like he just hit those uh, clan rats there. It should be noted that Night Runner's things are pretty much terrible in this matchup. It's probably because he had two of the green skinned factions to face off that he's brought them. Ooh. Uh, actually, Night Runner's a uh, trade very. Ooh, very that was well a nasty flock of doom. Things. Uh, yeah, a lot of the bullfights are just running through it. Yeah. Still. Any shot what? color pops? Nope. Uh, I think I'm gonna pop one soon. Ooh, is that an AoE Curse of Anathema? That's gonna be decreasing the already terrible stats of bullfights down to 4 melee attack and 0 defense. <laughs> Dear god. Oh god, and there's a Saurus getting hit from the side. But my Night Runners are still shooting away. They be slinging. Quite fortunate that the Lisbon didn't have any sources of terror. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Otherwise, they'd have been very bad. Because look here, this this, arm, this 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 spot here, a single like Bastildon, everything runs. Everything here runs to a Bastildon, except for maybe Queek and a Pack. Oh, even the Packmaster, I don't think no. has. Uh, no, the Packmaster has uh, okay leadership. Mm, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I dropped a Pestilent Breath there, which wiped out a good chunk of the skinks. Yeah, they'll do that. That's that's what that's there for, for killing skunks. Yeah. Skunks. Uh, I believe I summoned. Yeah, I summoned a unit of Clan Rats. Oh, yeah, it should also be noted that the, uh, some, some of the Lizard Malami we've got back here, there's uh, three community stalkers making their way over, so. Yeah. 
they'll take their time. The cold one Kev could be. Who was playing the listen Uh, it was Logic. So his okay. plan was, uh, it was pretty much the fact that he thought he was going to either be facing Artillery Skaven or Artillery with Empire. Yeah, because they have the three Empire stalkers there, in the back. Right. Yeah, and, uh, honestly, uh, I, I felt the Night Runners actually did, uh, reasonable damage for their cost. Cold ones charging into, uh, Storm Vermin and Halberds here. Oh, they are, I'll blob it up, though, because of that, so that fucker didn't just help out. Yeah. He cast, I think, like... It, 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 a lot just of a flocks. ridiculous amount of flocks of doom, but with Queek and the Plague Priest bouncing around between all of the source units. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and he runs in and throws all the bombs into one of the Night Runners, but I respond with the uh, Storm Vermin, and uh, they don't do so well against Storm Vermin. No, they don't have the. It AP also thing. slings. Would have done even worse against Kalthgard. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, against Kalthgard. Oh no. Look at this counter fight. We've got Blow Darts versus Slingers. What, what is this? The Dark Ages? Yeah, I know. That'd be the way before uh, Dark Ages, this is like the prehistoric well, ages. But, yeah, like I said, I found Night Runners are actually quite good against uh, dealing with Chameleon Skinks. Because they're only 500, they're cheaper, and also can trade really well. And also, they have low okay stats, they're like 2020, so they're like Chameleon Skinks in melee. 2020. Decks. 2020 yeah. vision. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was throwing the Rat Ogres into that fight to beat up the. Uh, just... Oh yeah, here comes the wolf rats again. Yeah, wolf rats coming in again. Oh, I, yeah, heard, I heard a rock drop. Unfortunately, he only gets yeah. one rock drop. Oh, some pretty good damage on the comedian stalkers there. From the plague. Pest and yeah. Another flock of doom coming down. You're just act asking for him, stacking up like this. You're yeah, just begging yeah. for it. <laughs> but it's rats, don't worry. Yeah, they're used to crows. Hey. Crows and rats are like best friends. So many flocks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. The Night Runner is still shooting away. Oxshot has been shooting for quite a while now. Yeah, yeah. shooting away. And uh, the wolf rats, I think, just move from unit to ranged unit and just murders them. And the Brood Horror is still the Brood Horror, and still has like at full health after regening. Oh my god, that charge! Oh, it took out half its health. And then it just routes off yet, because of the terror it causes. Yeah. I feel like if uh, still on would have been brought, it still would have been. What would have happened is it would have just been brought down by the Wolf Rats and the Brood Horror. Okay, hang on a second. What? I don't know what you guys are doing in this game. Yeah, but, uh... Why is Azag in that Brood Horror the only terror-causing things in this entire map? <laughs> this is Greenskin's Empire Skaven. And Where's all vampires. the terror-causing? Oh, the, the vampire's the only one you want to need to not worry about when it comes to terror. Where's yeah. all the scary stuff? <laughs> Bring more scary stuff. Rats are scared little creatures. Look at them, they're frightened, they're terrified. They just want to go home. A, a well, don't show is, up, they'd run. Well, here's, here's the thing. If he did bring a Bastildon, all that would have happened is I would have ran the Wolf Rats and the Rat Ogres, pinned it, and murdered it in a few seconds with the Rat If it was an Arc of Sotek, you'd die immediately. Mm. It wouldn't die immediately. Well, it'd be very bad, though. It would be a rough time. Then I would just use the Rat Ogres and the... the or it'd still die, and it would break, because... It, it, Pretty sure that Bastildon has, has better leadership than the Storm Vermin do. What has better than? Yeah, oh, Arc yeah, of they, dro they dropped. They dropped the oh the Arc, Arc of Sotek. Isn't the Arc of Sotek like actually uh, cost money? I think they all. I think the River Yeah, that the crystal, the solar engine. Crystal. Yeah, that's the one. Solar that's engine and the Arc of Sotek. <laughs> they were all more expensive, but I think Arc of Sotek is the cheapest of the three. Of course, well, the regular feral one is cheap. Some other time, but yeah, at this point, uh, most of his army is broken. Yeah, at this point, you're just uh, you're just uh, going ground. over to the other side. I guess we can so. launch if you want. You can mm -hmm. launch the rest. Put it on two the speed though, because it's yeah. angering me. Yeah. This battle. <laughs> Look, there's no uh, there's a terror code. What's even where? Who's the Empire general? Oh, uh, it knows Valkmar. Okay, there you go. No, I mean, no, I mean, who's the general? It's oh. three. There's there's three terror codes. It's Valkmar. Yeah. There's Valkmar.
yeah, uh, there's the Death Hag. But yeah, uh, they were in a very interesting predicament when they looked over and saw that I still had like units of Storm Vermin still alive in my Brood Horror. And yeah, not a lot of AP left there with the Storm Vermin. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like uh, a Bastildon wouldn't have solved the problems that uh, Logic ran into. Because I, I have the tools to kill a Bastildon. Unless you're just being delusional at this point. Maybe I am. <laughs> maybe, maybe because not. Because rat men scared. Rat men don't scared. exist. Rat. But yeah, no, no. It's like the uh, the the witch hunters. It's like the rat men don't exist. We okay. Can, we can, they don't. It's just a weird <laughs> looking beast men. Yeah. They're merely a variation of the beast men. I pretty much uh, start shooting at whatever Savage Orcs or Biggins. I was trying to get the four uh, Spider Riders because they had ammo, but... Here's a joke. Heinrich Kemmler, Volkmar the Grim, and uh, Quick Head Taker all stand next to a clan rat unit. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I forgot the punchline. Uh, Kemmler asked, uh, Have you I've seen Krell? <laughs> he would be Krell's very impressed with this. Krell's probably a long dead. He probably summoned them a minute ago and he's <laughs> he dead. He summoned them inside of a blob. <laughs> he was fighting. He's probably very dead. Yeah. Ooh, uh, a pestilent breath going down. Yep. I'm going to uh, and put this at two speed for this is... Yeah. Yeah, I drop it on the... So uh, the you guys are just having a stare off right works. now, eh? Uh, pretty much what I did, because Kukin is uh, a big brain boy, and realized that if he has his uh, goblin archer shoot, my plague priest can wipe out his goblins, or summon mm, my reveal them. Yeah, because he is stalked, so... And also, I'd be able to shoot back with my night runners. So what, is he waiting to kill the pestilent one? Yeah, he's... well, he pretty much just has to wait, because he can't really... he can't shoot it, or you'll you'll see. But yeah, it, pretty much it's a back and forth and running around like the heroes in the open. He just shot a camera. Yeah, uh, but my, that was when my Plague Priest was far away enough. Ah, uh, uh, he's coming in now. Yeah, now he's moving them back. Something just died. Oh, there was a Death Hag that just died there. No, but yeah, no, I'm, was... I'm bringing it forward and it's like trying... And he moves his trying? archers back so they don't get spotted. Because he knows that's what I'm trying to do. That was the last of the Lizard. Yeah. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, the beast, the beast caster, uh, was, the beast caster got some good value. But, yeah, all this fuck to do. But I think at, at the end, I eventually just forced my way up, because gotta end the battle somehow. He has the high ground. Yes, they, they have the high ground, in Cap and, uh, Kukin. Oh yeah, they did pretty good damage against that, uh, Night Goblin unit. Should yeah, probably use that with the rest of the arrows then. That is the yeah, uh, yeah, dangerous. I, Ooh, well, that's a good there's, no, there's no visual differences, and then I summon the clan rats, which went right into them. Which is exactly what I wanted, and they all routed instantly. Which was uh, good. It worked out. Yeah, uh, because uh, on a on a first glance, uh, you can't tell the rusty arrows from other goblin archers. It's annoying. None of that battle's nothing, eh? Let's take a look at the values of only the Lizman and uh, Skaven. <laughs> yes, of only the Lizman and Skaven. Alexis was, uh, what did he bring? More he laughing. Bring... Yep, oh. no terror, no terror. I know he did have hex rays. <laughs> yeah, he had hex rays. One it's unit. Just the hex rays got wiped out by a foot of gork. Come on, Alexis, didn't you know heavy calves terrible me? Yeah. Didn't even know. What did Reg bring? Let's just critique their armies for a minute. Yeah, uh, Voltmother Grip did good. Really unbreakableness in the army. Don't know why. Uh, well, I uh, think his army got just completely uh, land basted. Your army, of course. We have a look at that last. Actually, let's look at Incaps first. Look at that value from what did he? What did Rosak even do? He's got three thousand two hundred. Oh, he did he for, for foot of gorks. Foot of yeah, foot of gorks. On, uh, that's the one. Rates. Ah, I see. That'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that alone got him like half his value. Interesting how your death hag as well. Uh, Death Hag gets more magic from casting spells, so you just siphon. 
constantly. Does she? Yes. Uh, their special, like, caster power. Every time they cast, they get more uh, magic. I think they just get to extra recharge rate. No. It's just extra magic. I, th I don't know, one of the two. I'm squinting right now, you can't tell. But... Mm, yeah. Oh, so those were all big ones. No, they weren't all big ones. There's a lot of them were big ones. Anyway, no, let's look at this Lizardman in the Skaven army now. Yes. Oh, because all didn't shoot much in the way yeah, of value. Oh, look at that value from the beast caster there, 1,600. Yeah, they... Stalkers didn't do got... much. They were late to the party. Soros were killing like Skaven the whole time, so they value for them. Skirmishers yeah, uh, weren't shooting what they needed to. They're fighting, I think, Clanros. I think one of the Soros yeah, well, this were one did, okay. fighting... One of the Soros were actually fighting the uh, Storm Vermin, so... Yeah, that's the one that actually would have got value, probably. Queek yeah. did okay value, although how much is he? At this uh, state. he's, I think, like 1,700 with all his yeah, items. Yeah, he didn't quite pay for himself then. Yeah. Well, he didn't really have anything to fight other than the Saurus. No, how did the Night Runners do? They did pretty okay decently. Yeah. 600 uh, each. Only yeah, they're 500 gold each as well. well and most of, their, most of their shooting was at, like, other chameleon skinks and yeah. the skink javelins, so they did their job. And then the Wolf Rats got so much value. Yeah, Wolf Rat OP. Especially when you give, you, yeah, well, whenever you give him shock yeah. color, or you get him regeneration yeah, and him shock. leadership. Actually, I know I gave the uh, rat ogres those because those rat ogres have rage too. Because mm, cause they're angry. But yeah, uh, I guess that technically they could have brought like a bigger monster, something like a something that might survive uh, getting beaten Ooh, on. Because look at I'm this. just wondering. Oh. How no, it's just a. I just. I looked at this replay. I thought, oh, this looks good. And I saw there's no Skaven caster. Yeah. No, this is a bad one. Yeah, and this isn't good. This is what I put as the funny because it's awful. Is this the funny one? Like his also just sent it to me. Yeah, he, he sent it in. Um... Okay, for note to self, get some replays on my own. Just a couple at least. It's nice yeah. to have some of these ones where you can see terrible players, but. You know, as long as you need some high-level professional plays. Yeah, um... <coughs> Sorry, just choked on my like, pride there. Gr granted, sure, I could have traded out that uh, Storm Vermin for a Clan Rat. Uh, I mean, for no, a Clan Rat. Oh my yeah, god, we're doing it. For a Clan Rat. For a no, no, a singular Clan Rat. Yeah, for a singular I clan trade in all of my Storm Vermin for a Clan Rat. Yeah. But here, he has opted for the strategy of, but what if I waste it, threw away all of my money on... Uh, niche Ooh, units. Oh, look at that, he's camping at the back as well. Uh, so Skaven Army is, uh... <laughs> Very bad. Really bad. Like, this is going to run like, immediately, is... and then this yeah. is all dead. And the Eshen, Eshen Triads don't have enough Any holding models. power. You, you, yeah. you really need some decent clan rep front line here. Yeah. Warplock Jezails, Lightning Cannons. The, the back line isn't too bad, it's just the front line that's just never going to hold. Also note, he has, uh, I think, like, three Brood Horrors. Yeah, no, uh, a, a Bone Chewer and uh, two Brood Horrors. Yeah. He also has just two Eshin Triads over here for some reason. Because like, even if they run into Cold One Cavern, I'm pretty sure they'll just lose. Yeah. Because well, they'll die on the charge, probably. Yeah, no, the charge would kill them, but they're in they're in Forest, technically, so they would win. Do they have Strider and need Cold One Cavern? That feels weird if they don't have Woodsman, because they're like Jungle Cavalry. Them in our jungle creatures. But the problem is, if they run into pterodons, they're gonna die. Oh, what a shame that would be, eh? Speaking yeah. of which, got some some pterodons over here in this corner. Yep. The rest of the uh, Lizardman army, lots of skinks. <laughs> Nearly entirely skinks. He also has Legion of Chakra, which of course can give an AOE missile resistance to everything in range, which can work quite well against Gisales, so there to defend the Stegodon. Has another Stegodon here. He's also hiding his Beastcaster here. Behind the Stegodon, he's got a Manticore Summon and a uh, Flock of Doom, both really good spells against Skaven. And the fact that he's hiding it behind means he's not going to be able to snipe the caster very easily. He also has Crocker on his... is that a horned one? It looks like a horned one. Yeah, that's a yeah. horned one. Uh, along with Hand of the Gods and his other various abilities. He uh, also has a Cold One Spear Rider Cav there, just in case of any uh, monster play, Molder monster play. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Oh, he also has another... he has the... Well, there's great, I want to guess what they're called, is it? It's not the Clostodon Hunters. I forgot, I can't remember. What are they called? What? What? Poor Hoxes Sentinels. Yeah, These ones. These have a special rock drop, which does, I think we might see it doing really well against this here. I can imagine it doing a yeah. lot of damage in one rock drop. In fact, I'm going like, to pay attention to that. I don't know. Like, I don't even know how his, like, build supposed to function in his head. Like, I'm trying to wrap my head around his logic here. No, it's 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 it's, it's a typical playing too much campaign where Skaven Staves just do really well at holding AI in place because AI just dumb. 
Yeah, and that they never use a, like, yeah. a spell in a reasonable sense. I don't know, like, I don't know, even like against like... We've all been the there, AI, I used to not bring casters. Bring... Uh, well, here's the thing, you could not bring a caster and still do okay at least Ooh, if you're that was a... built. Not meant to be that accurate, but... it's pretty good. Oh, that was Hand of the Gods, you know, when I think it's Oxyol. I'm so, I'm so used to seeing just Oxyol. But yeah, you can see Hand of the Gods doing some pretty good damage to the front there. Yep. Rock Drop was a bit of target here, unfortunately. To regenerate that, so... Yeah, but he's going to hit his healing cap anyway, so... It's not even yeah. regeneration, it's just his abilities buffed. Remolded, straight off the bat. That's that's kind of a waste. Yeah, I could just he wait could for that to regen. Passive, yeah, he could just passively regen. Uh, for some reason, the jail are in front of the uh, slaves slaves now. Here's the question I have to ask Willow. Like, okay, so like, yeah, bringing slaves and stuff. Like, I've seen scape players bring a lot of slaves a lot, uh, especially the newer multiplayer ones. And I just run it down with cavalry because of course, even yeah. with the mass changes, the basic slaves can't kill cavalry. Mm -hmm. But why the Eshin triads? Is it is it is it because Couldn't. they're afraid of getting shot by chameleon skinks? Couldn't tell you. Yeah. They have the armor sundering and the anti-large armor person does, at least in theory, function quite well against the uh, lizardmen. The only problem is, is they're not immune to psychology. Yeah. Why not just you know bring council guard and council guard mm. or storm with halberds as well. Well, just council guard. Who knows. Oh, he's summoned up his Rhino He's also fair. got into the Warplight Encounters with the Pterodons. Which is just what the Pterodons are there for, is to disrupt all that Skaven ranged. While the Stegodons just rampage around the place, doing whatever they please. Yeah, and again, Ashen Triads fighting into infantry that they shouldn't be fighting. Mm-hmm. Manacle summon going down, as Krokgar proceeds after Throck the Unclean. Like, their stats might look nice, but you got to look at the model count. Their models are too small yeah, and their to HP really count. fight an infantry unit. Their they HP is the also count. very low for an infantry unit. Yeah, especially with that low of model count. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm not going great for the scale right now. Like, it's not like Black Orcs or Chosen who have low model count, but stupidly high health. For yeah, they model. just have that. If we see, is there any high health units left? High health even? If you look at these ones, these are 3,000, so then, yeah, there you go, the maximum 3, is 4,300. Uh, Compare that to the skin cohort, which has, like, what, 7,000? Well, here yeah. we go, Legion of Chakwa Chak have 7,600. Uh, Ashen yeah. Triads just not have the uh, health to do anything. They don't have the health just to survive, even. That'll be the, uh, the army losses already. Yeah, already broken. At least it was a fast one, you know. There you go, yeah, and there it goes. I think I got another Beastman replay in here. I think it's, uh... Oh yeah, what about the three? I don't think we did three. I think we just did three, didn't we? No, we did, I think... Oh no. Three is uh, this also one. Yeah, we did that one. Yeah, then four. We missed four. Ooh, okay. Because we did five, I think. Beastman versus Tomb King, say. Yes. And it's new as well. Ooh. Yes. Uh, this also... Beastman army seems half decent. This... What? Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, I almost thought you, we had a nice know, replay. Willow, I almost you can bring thought five caskets. I almost thought we had a really cool, <laughs> high-level replay to watch that was gonna show us a lot of the new tips and tricks with Beastmen. Well, here's the thing: it, this still does because the Beastman player. Doesn't yeah, the Beastman like player a looks like uh, a decent person. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it, it, we can use it as a tool to show that, you know, cheesing is not the way. <laughs> but yeah. Um, my my face know, is in my you, hand you right can, now. You can, you can bring five units of uh, Casket of Souls. First, that's... Oh, wait, no. You know what? I take it back. What is this? <laughs> the, the army composition seemed half decent, especially against... Tomb Kings, but uh... honestly, I think he literally just hit the nah. ready button once it started. I think that's what happened. Uh -huh. Oh, is Be it? No, even yeah. then, I think because no, think... no, like no, no. I watched Necrotic do this. He literally hit start right away. But even then, some of this should be deployed. Like at least. I think he might have went off to go make some tea or something. But I'm pretty sure if it's like even if it, the face start, like all the cavalry deploys together and then all the infantry deploys together, sort of thing. And also, I vanguard don't... units would deploy in front. There is none here. Well, then. I just realised. Wait, do Centigods have? No, they don't. Oh, they do. Yeah, Centigods would have deployed in front because they've uh, banged out. Anyway, we have. Uh, you know, I, I got my, I got my hopes up. Uh, this I, I, is all sorts me. of bizarre. So we have the blood 
brute behemoth, big old Also, uh, let me creature. note, I could, we, we weren't able to see the enemy uh, beastman army initially, because it was Yeah, the hill and the, in the forest and everything, yeah. So yeah, blood brute behemoth, very, very big melee attack creature. 79 with its frenzy activated, and then it also has a um, anti anti large of 30. So this will just cleave through any construct. Although again, it does also have that weakness to archers. When it's uh, in combat. Yeah. Oh, is that an extra plus 10? Yeah, it's an extra, no, plus 5. When it's in melee. No, uh, slaughter. Slaughter thing. Blood greed. Plus 5. Oh, plus 5? Okay, I thought it was the slaughter thing. No, uh, I thought it was cool. Slaughter, slaughter, slaughter is cool. Yeah. Primal Fury. Oh yeah, the slaughter is cool. Well, yeah, when he's uh, got when he's close to Torx, he'll get extra 10 as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So speaking of which, Torx, fire attacks also do really well against Tomb King Lords, because like, almost all of them have weakness to fire. So Torx yeah. will be clowning on any of those lords that come there. Well, except uh, Katap. <laughs> Does he? He doesn't have a weakness to fire. He's the only lord. Mm, strange. He is uh, bizarre that way, and very funny. Well, he's, well, he's, he's not like staff. he's going to be any stronger against uh, Torx, though. <laughs> yeah. He's not actually going to put up a fight, put it that way. DJ, DJ Katep playing his tunes. So has uh, Spirit Leech, two uh, Razor Gore Herd, a, a War Gore Office Chariot with Deadly Onslaught. Um, three Centigors with Great Weapons, one of which has the Magic Damage and the Guardian. Three Ungor Spearman Herd. And that's it like, for uh, that. I think this guy unintentionally had a reasonable build. But yeah. just kind of did whatever like, he felt mate, like. Put Wargo on the chariot, put the ch caster on the chariot as well, and then like, yeah. maybe also, switch out some of the Centigore stuff for like some better infantry killing Also, not saying put it on a chariot because the chariots are broken, it's because you want to keep your yeah, even then, lords moving. Even just a race score chariot would just be 10,000% better than yeah. on foot. Not even the same, but yeah. the Tuscore is just a better option these days. Well, currently, yeah. until they... Even, to be uh, fair, even if they nerf it, the fact that it's a cheaper option well, okay. would probably mean a better. Here's the thing. It, until they fix it. Well, yeah. But, you know, no, yeah. fix, same thing. Yeah. In my opinion, it's the same thing. Mm. So, if we look at the... This army. We have some skeleton horse archers, which, to be fair, do pretty well against beastmen, because they can't really catch them because of how much range they have. Assuming you're skirmishing them correctly, and you split them up in different yeah. directions, they're really, are really annoying to deal with. And also, on top of that, a lot of beastmen don't have armor to survive. No. As these don't even have shield to send so... Yep. The rest of the army is just skeletons and caskets. And you want to know how much magic he had? He a never lot. never ran out of magic. No, I wouldn't. didn't think so, especially with... Let's see what spells he has. He has the cheapest spells as well, so he is literally just never going to run out of magic. With the Lich Staff. Yeah, the Lich Staff as well. Although, does that even do very good here? Uh... No. Well, it, it stops all abilities. Yeah, but are you really scared of any here? Well... Like, Torox's Brass Body, and that's about it. Fuck it. Brass body. And you never get your it. brass body ever. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's get this over with. Let's get this over. So I think he immediately saw and realized that he can't run because yeah, you you know he's got you know his brain cells because he decided to go through the forest. Uh, yeah, a bit he late though. He's already at over half health. Yeah. Almost all. And this one's okay. And then you also oh, have the God. artifact fire coming in. Superior firepower. Yeah, so this isn't the Tomb King session, but caskets do a lot of damage. They do a lot of Might damage. Why did I slow it down? I need to get this over as quick as possible. Now, I'm pretty sure these Skeleton Horse Sashes have like zero AP value. Yeah, they have zero AP value. They have so three. So you don't want to rocks with it. See, that's a Torox. Well, yeah, I mean, what, there's nothing in this army that can kill Torox. <laughs> Except maybe the caskets. Or the Gorgon. <laughs> Like, what can kill anything large? Uh, the horseman. The, oh, yeah, the, okay, yeah, the horseman. horseman he has no armor. Oh, whoo, here we go, this swimming unit, look at the la- Oh, fucking god, in one shot. I would not want to be part of that. Oh, that. Another, here's another one. <laughs> oh, no. I do love caskets, it. though, so I can't even be yeah. too mad. <laughs> well, what do you rate this uh, casket in? I didn't... Of... Out of a possible <laughs> casket, I give it a casket. Yeah, casket out of a casket, 10 out of 10. Oh no, he's standing oh, still as well, oh no, oh <laughs> no. Uh, I want to see them try and fire up Almost the Gorgon, see what happens. Yeah. I think 
does try that at one point. Oh yeah, there's... <laughs> if only you could take rocks. direct control of the casket. And yeah, here's here's the thing. Uh, the Beast yeah, does the smart idea and using Torox just push his way through just to get to the mm -hmm. caskets because that's the biggest threat in this army. Everything else is meaningless. It's just skeletons. As far as the eye can see. Although it is a lot of skeletons to be fair. It is a lot of skeletons. And also skeleton archers. Oh yeah, yeah the horse archers, yeah. Santacores are all gone now. So... Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and uh, Katep is uh, coming down with a bad case of getting beaten on by yeah, a big bull. Yeah, getting uh, staked. Oh, Torx just plows to the skeletons there. I don't think the skeletons can even do anything to him. I'm just going to enjoy watching no, Torx cleave really. skeletons for 10 hours. <laughs> oh. uh, I just want to see it make a gif of like the five caskets hitting that one Ungor unit and just deleting it from existence. Pigman bad. Let's see, what are they shooting at? Oh, the Pigman bad. The Razorcores. Torx uh, waking up from his uh, bone filled rage. <laughs> Going after Grant, hopefully, kill him. Just kill him. Kill the DJ. Kill. Kill Katep. No music in the steakhouse. <laughs> Is pretty much. Yeah. I'd hope it's over. I mean, I don't yeah, think the two Tim Kings yeah, can kill can the casket point. at all. Tim Kings can't kill uh, Torox. Like, at all. Yeah, no, there's nothing in the army that can kill him. The Gorgon got pretty low, and uh, yeah, yeah. the Skeleton Horse Archers, I think, were shooting all game. But due to the fact that the uh, the Gorgon's regeneration is actually quite fast. It's at mm -hmm. 8 hit points a second, as long as it's fighting. Which is probably how it stayed alive so long. Yeah, it definitely did go for quite a while. Well, actually, you think we can see the healing cap here, mate? If you look at the uh, thing here. Yeah, see, it's already healed 4,300. No, as yeah. it's, it's healed 2,100. Yeah, about 2,000 health. And he which tells is you Shefti was good. actually was the only thing that could maybe kill Torox. Yeah, he it doesn't matter. But I think they die right. before they run it off the field. He actually had a chance die. winning because his casket was still alive. Oh, there goes the casket. Just gonna wait for these skeletons to crumble. Ooh, the fire explosion. Oh yeah, look at that. It's like they all just died here. I feel bad for Torox. He's got nothing to eat after this. Just bones. Endless bones. No, he'll suck the marrow out. Ooh, do you think it's still in there? Just <laughs> sand, probably. Yeah. So yeah, values... <laughs> oh, let's look it's at got, those caskets. Look, to be fair, the horse archer's got... Pretty good value. The caskets didn't do much. To, but bear in mind, they were shooting ungors. Ungors, yeah, <laughs> because they happened to be on the map with forests. For sure, the they they did nuke the ungors for sure, but yeah. Torox got good uh, value. Yeah, that was a mess. Please never send anything like that again. Yeah, no. Uh, I was gonna do a do it as a funny, but we were so short on beastman replays, and the beastman army actually was pretty decently built. So, let's see. What's six? What was six again? What's seven? Seven? What's seven? Click it. It's uh, new. Oh, yeah. It's from two people. The happy the happy is uh, a good one. I'll but, do this uh, one. Yeah. This is probably going to be one of the last ones, isn't it? It's, yeah. This is, it's called uh, Kazrak. It's Kazrak. Well, the, weird, the only weird thing about it is it's Kazrak on foot for some reason, and I don't understand why he chose to do that. But he brought a bunch of chariots, uh, like the Razor chariots, the new ones, or Tuscor. Uh huh. And uh, I think, yeah, the Gore Herd on a chariot as well. On this, like, the Gore new Herd on a chariot, what? I mean, they uh, fit the entire Gore Herd on a chariot. Gore Gore. <laughs> just, just a bunch of good old boys. Imagine on having a chariot. a chariot that big, like it's like a stage, like a moving yeah, no, stage. Um, anyway, yeah, let's it's look at pretty this. Much, it's pretty much. 
if Kazrak was on the new chariot, it would be kind of like what people are seeing more recently with uh, Quick Battle and everyone just bringing a shitload of the new broken chariots. So, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm just crying right now. This looks like a half decent battle. <laughs> so happy. I know. To be fair, I haven't been, been able to play any matches myself. Neither have I. With the so. exception of like that one. We'll have some good ones next week, I swear. Where, I swear. Where? Yeah. Well, we'll also, on no one, no one in the the thing is sending them in either. So. Yeah, everyone's lazy. Yeah. Anyway, let's look over here in the corner. We got some uh, corner forces. Some Senegal throwing actions do really well against uh, Tomb Kings for obvious reasons. Armor piercing missile skirmish curve can't really catch them. Good against constructs. Tusco chariots. Should be able to do pretty well even against Constructs, just because of how broken they are. Shh. Some Chaos Warhounds of Poison, just in case he's got some Skeleton Horse Archers. He also has Kazrak over here. I don't know yeah. why that is, but he's, he's there. He's on foot. He's on foot with a Gore Herd as well. That is the, the oddity here, but we'll ignore that. Yeah, that is the most <laughs> confusing thing. If he, I was expecting him to be on a Tuscor Chariot as well. Yeah, he was noticing that. These two are on Tuscors. Be pretty much, the, effectively, the Chariot spam that everyone sees currently. Yeah, we have two Tuscors over here, a Wargore and a Beast Caster. Or, although yes. Beast Caster bringing way too many spells, you've got to cut any spells off the, the uh, Beast Caster. Yeah. Always an idea to do that. Front line of probably, Ungors. Probably could have gotten uh, the Tuscor for Kazrak. Yeah, if he had done that, yeah. Some archers in the back. Archer fire is always good, even against the armor of constructs. It still works out pretty well. Yep. Also, is there anything just you can reduce armor with here? No. Uh, yeah, but. just Ungor, Ungor spears, some gore herd. A lot of Ungors. Uh, are those Ungors? Yeah, these are all Ungors here. Wow, that's a lot of Ungors. Yeah, which uh, yeah, he, does worry, because they well, don't have I the think, best morale, and he, against Undead. I think it's they the run. reason that a lot of the uh, Tomb Kings will bring like basic chaff infantry, and mm -hmm. the Ungors will beat uh, the... Spe yeah, Skeleton Spears, they will. Yeah, Skeleton Spears and stuff, they'll they'll eventually beat and uh, grind through. As so for it's the... like, why, why waste a lot of money on a unit that might get shot to pieces yeah, exactly. by yeah. Tomb Kings? It, it makes sense, it makes sense, right? He's also used it all so he can Vanguard deploy like right in front of him. <laughs> that too, which for... makes sense. But you know, to be fair, like, from what we saw last match with all the caskets, can't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if the other guy? Yeah, if he had done like... this against this, it would work way better. Uh, yeah. We have Nekara Horsemen as well as Necropolis Knights, regular ones on either side. A bit of a flanking force there. Necropolis Knights, obviously, being quite armored, means they can do quite well against all the beastmen stuff. Four yep. units of skeleton archers. Had there been a Gorgon, he, these would have been really nicely, but unfortunately, all the stuff that's like their best targets can end up being behind them, so they're probably going to get caught out. Sepulchral Stalkers, along with Cetra, and another unit of Nekara Horsemen. Front line of skeletons, all spearmen. Yep. What does Cetra bring in? Cetra bring in Cetra does have his spells cut, so Cetra's been used uh, quite correctly there. Yeah. Has his two cheapest spells in the explosion, so this should work out pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah Stalkers actually... are basically also really, really good against uh, the Tusco Chariots. Yeah, they get their missile much... fire off and then they uh, just hit them. Yeah, they just murder any large. Tusco Chariot going into the spears there. Do a good chunk of damage. What it wants to do is, like, you just really need to get those chariots into those archers as quickly as possible. Because look how much damage this, this uh, Bracham has already taken from the archer fire. And uh, you'll see in a second uh, from the Sepulchral Stalkers. They're going to fire a volley off, I think. Yep, there they go. Yeah, look at that. Massive damage. Tusco Chariots do not have that much HP added onto them. They're a yeah, mount, the main, but they the only have like a hundred extra. Very strong is the fact that they can run into stuff and be unaffected more mm -hmm. or less by the infantry and other units and cavalry. Yeah, look at that chariot getting cut down really and quickly. And the other one's already dying as well. It's shattered already. The archers, and yeah, this caster's already gone as well. Four units of archers are just unloading into that one. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Already two Tuscor chariots gone. And he's brought the Necro horseman around the flank there into the get into the archers. Good play there. Yep. And shattered. And he's used uh, to flank into these ungles. Yeah, happy here being big brain and focusing fire on the, uh, the important units. In the yeah, although the Tuscor, all the uh, reflanking force has arrived now. Don't, the Tuscor is going right into the archers as they should have done from the start. You just see how much damage there they cleave through them, as, of course. Yeah, if, uh, but at this point, the, if the, the Stepakos the can fire another volley on them, they can probably wipe them out quite quickly. Because now, now, uh, the Beastmen don't even have a caster anymore. Although he has rallied, he might be coming yeah, back. That's true. But I don't think he'll be relayed for long when the Nekahara horsemen catch him. 
Sentry does have to watch out here. There's two units of throwing axes uh, here, which can do quite a fair amount of damage to them. Yeah, but every time he casts a spell, he does heal himself. So yeah, and he also has that physical on. resistance, which, yeah, there he goes. He's overcasting on himself as well. Oh, explosion yeah, as well. Done good damage to those Chaos Warhounds. Yep. Getting some just support just fire. Already those Tuscal Chariots are like down to none. No health, and they've yep. rattled off. Yep, and uh, being shot to pieces. Beastcaster has got a Manticore summon off. Not so much, it, not too useful in this matchup because there's no Arcan right now, or Hierophant, no. or Casket, or nothing. Casket. Nothing really it wants to attack. Yeah, only only with the archers would be like the best thing. Wipe it out and then. Typical stalkers. Uh, they still have how much? I said desert twenty nine. They only have twenty nine melee attack when they're not fighting large, so yeah. they tend to be a bit slow with their damage output when it's like anything but large. But it's the ROR, so they tend to have way better stats. So yeah, they, even then, they, they, like trade, a, they can trade pretty okay. 29, even on the ROR. Yeah. You should have someone going down on the center of throwing axes, most likely just to tie them up and stop them from throwing. Yep. Uh, and, uh, well, the Shepardy should be able to win that. Ooh, Amber Spear going into Cetra, trying to whip them down, because the Beast Caster does remain alive. He probably really wants to get, like, those Necropolis Knights after that caster, because. See, if he had chased them off earlier, all these spells that are happening right now wouldn't be happening. So yeah, we really need uh, to get that guy off the, off the fight as soon as possible. Yeah, the Necropolis Knights, uh, or at least the Nekahara Horsemen, should have uh, been able to run him off. But yeah. I think he was busy with the flank attack. Mm -hmm. That he just didn't notice that he had uh, rallied in time. Manticore going down into Rampage, just throwing itself in, it's probably going to despawn soon. Yeah, yeah there uh, it goes. So Centacore, Centacore is taking a bad beating, losing lots of units. These tentacles throwing into the backs of the Copper Knights, definitely what they want to be doing. Getting some good damage off on those. Yep. Uh, we get a side charge from there. I think at this point he's trying to like break the Kazarak. Because if Kazarak break. dies here, most of the army falls apart. Yeah. Does Kazarak have any. He doesn't have his item or anything, so he's not getting any extra damage resistance or bonus damage. Nope. And at the end of the day, Kazarak is basically an anti infantry lord. Not too skilled against the old Tomb Kings, although they are stacking up here, causing some Flock of Dooms to work quite well. But against, but it's mostly like cavalry and monsters, mm. so it's not not it's massively effective. Yeah. And at this point, Beastmen don't really have much to do with constructs. They only have a couple throwing axes left. And most of them have used most of their ammunition. So. Yeah. And I think he's focusing only on the Cetra, who I think has the damage resist. Yeah, he pops the damage resist on himself again. Yeah, the physical resistance causes no magic damage here. Yeah, and uh, so he runs into the scenario that he's just throwing axes into a unit that's taking half damage, more or less. Mm -hmm. And the Bray Shawing gets thrown in, and I think he's gonna die here. They should aim to get that guy ran off as quickly as possible. Or at least dead or shattered. Yeah. Anything, as long as he's not casting any more spells. There's another explosion, killed a bunch of Ungor. Tusco chariots came back immediately everyone. shattered on the charge. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I think you probably speed up at this point because it's just a bit of a, a destruction fest. It's it's a slug fest at this point. Because the Necropolis Knights with like yeah, he's got two units of Necropolis Knights and Cetra on the War Sphinx. Uh, there's no way he's winning this now. Yeah, even though the balance of power says it's quite even, it really isn't. It isn't. It is entirely... It's not showing the, uh, the fact that they just don't have anything to do with it. Not to mention how spread out all the Beastman units are, and they're all just coming in at Wave Assault sort of thing. One at a time. If he wanted to stand a chance, he should have like tried to mobilize everything into one big push. Make full use of those archers that he still has left. Well, yeah. So the problem at that point is that he could just avoid the blob and just go straight for the archers or run straight through his units. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good uh, etc. The Corpus Knights did alright, so oh yeah, the desert is yeah. good. All of the horsemen. Uh, the archers of yeah. course all did well with the sniping. Happy uh Happy did a good job. Yeah. Peaceman side, of course did good. Kazvak did eh? Yeah, the, the beast caster went off quite a bit. Although, oh yeah, those throwing axes, that 1600 from this throwing axe unit, that did really well. Yeah, they were probably throwing into Cetra and the Necropolis Knights. And one of the Tuscores did alright. 
Yeah, one of them. But I think that was the one that was sitting and fighting at the arch the entire time. Yeah, and the one that was running through then, probably. Yeah. Alright, uh, I think there should be one more replay set up. I'll, I'll tell you if it's a uh, good, good or not if, if you click, when you click on it, because I'll know who it is. Uh, is it eight? No, eight is the last one, is the dwarf one. That's the... Mm, I think that's all of them. Huge crowd, yeah, I know. Three full people. It was, it should be seven or six. You missed six. Uh, so seven was the one we just watched, I think. Then Norska versus... Some of these, some of these are named differently because of their, uh, like I think I have copies of different ones that people, different people have sent me. Yeah, yeah. Because was this the one? Yeah, wait. Yeah, this is the Norska vs. Beastman one. It's the same one as uh, with this the, one. With the two Gorgons. Yeah, it's yeah. the same one. Look here, I'm clicking between them now. Okay. Let's see. Then what about five and four and three? No, yeah, this was the casket one. Okay. Then. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine, uh, yeah. uh, well, there's the extra one, which is another old replay. Yeah, it's another old one now. Or the funny. Isn't the funny one you already watched? Did we? What's the funny one again? Skaven versus Lizardmen. What? Have we watched this one? Oh wait. Yes, no, this is the one we yes, watched. Yes, we watched. Yeah, that was the that was the bear. Oh wait, then we'll just call it here for today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all for watching. Yes. And uh, we'll see you next week. We'll get a lot more of the Beastman replays and hopefully we'll have some pretty decent ones for you next week. Yeah, this, this time around. So uh, stay tuned. Goodbye. And if you've got replays, send them to me, Mr. Psycho. You heard the man. Yeah. See ya. Bye.